It's a herb that me personally, I feel it's useful and I feel it has its place. I'm not trying to say demonizing it and oh, this is evil because we are the ones in control. Yeah. Rastafero. Blessings of Wholeness family. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Akeem Pierre. If you're new, welcome to the vibes. Today, y'all, we're talking about Kratom, which to me is one of the most powerful, useful, and effective herbs on the planet. But it does come with its things to watch out for. And let's just say I've been on a journey with it. Started about six to seven years ago. And in this video, we're going to go into my journey, my experience with Kratom or Mitrogena Speciosa. And we're going to go into why I started to take it, why I consistently continue to take it, and then why I stopped and why I felt like it was harming my life and harming my purpose and my mission and my vision. So this one's a real authentic, a little bit of story time. We're going into it, y'all. So give thanks. So for those of y'all who don't know what Kratom is, I'll give a, a little quick introduction. So Kratom is a herb that grows in Southeast Asia, Bali, Indonesia, um, the South Pacific, South Pacific, the Southeast Asia islands, Thailand, uh, Malaysia. I said that already, but it's in that area of the world. And it's a herb that's related to the coffee plant. It's called Mitrogena Especiosa. And what it does is at a low level, when you take a little bit of it, it stimulate, it's stimulating. And then if you take a lot of it, it's more sedative. And this is a herb that seven, six, seven years ago, once I graduated university, I moved back to Canada from Colombia, and I was looking for a job. And one of the, the job that I got ended up being a job where I was selling herbs all around the US. So I would travel around the US. I went to St. Louis, went to Orlando, went to New York, New Jersey, spent a couple months out there just going door to door to these stores and selling them herbs. And what we were selling was like a Kratom blend mix, five hour energy, you just pop the top, and you take it back and you just feel like, whoo, I'm unstoppable. So that was my first introduction to this herb. I was going to my training and they said, here, try this. I tried it. Later on that day, I, had, so I, I was sitting with the CFO, the COO, CEO. They were asking me questions. I was like, yo, this herb makes me feel good. Like, I was smooth with it. Like, I was nice with it. So I'm like, I like this. I like this. I could, I could rock with this. And for the next, let's say, I was working there for about eight months. I would be, they would send us to, let's say, New Jersey. And we would have our whole car and our whole hotel room stacked up with thousands of these bottles. And we would be sampling these bottles. And we'd be driving from one part of New Jersey, like East Orange, like right by Manhattan, right by New York. And then we'd go all the way into the depths, like drive an hour and we're somewhere else in New Jersey. And we just be sipping these things, sipping these things, sipping them, taking them back, feeling good, just like vibing, going to the store, talking to people, you know, doing the sales job. And it was something that it was like just part of the lifestyle of what we did at that time, working for this company and taking these herbs. And up until this time, there was not much in the news about it. There was not much anywhere about it. All that we were learning was what the company was telling us. And the company was telling us this is like a, a natural energy drink. And this is something that, it has nothing wrong with it, basically. You know what I mean? Um, it's just an energy drink. You're going to feel good. You're going to feel focused. You're going to feel alert. And this is better than the Red Bull and all that. And, you know, I believed it. And um, I really actually like the herb. And to this day, I still love the herb. Um, but what happened is once we stopped working at that job, we went to find the pure herb of it. Because at that job, it was a, a bottle and it was mixed with all this other stuff. And we we're just looking for that puro, the pure Kratom, pure Mitrogena, Especiosa. And, um, you know, we were, me and my friend Dom, shout out my brother, um, we were just experimenting with it. And this was something that helped us. Like, it helped us. We felt energy. We felt clear. We felt activated. We felt like we could study. We could learn. A lot of that stuff helped us out. So... I was personally, we were looking to start creating a product. So this was my second product I was looking to bring forward. 
called productivity. This is a tea you take to help you get more productive. And um, so we were just experimenting. I was like, what is it like for pre-workout? What is it like for um, going to read? What is it like for studying? What is it like for, like we were experimenting it in all situations. Like, hey, students, instead of taking Adderall, why don't you try something natural? Hey, people in pain, instead of taking these opioids, why don't you try something natural? So we were looking to provide these solutions and these are all real solutions that Kratom provides. Um, but then what happened is for me is, at that point, I was always cycling on and off the herb. Like I would take it for some time and then I'd stop taking it for some time because I don't like to be dependent on things. I don't like to feel like I have to take something, right? So I'd cycle on, cycle off, cycle on, cycle off. But then after some years, I just didn't stop taking it and it just became a routine. It became something that I did every day and even though like it didn't harm me in, in, a, in a way where I could say like this affected my life and like ruined my life or anything like that, for me, I just don't like to be dependent on things and I don't like that feeling of like I have to take something or I'm relying on something, you know? So that, that alone, it didn't sit right with me. And for a long amount of time, I let that feeling of, you know, it's okay. It's not, I was like telling myself, it's not harming your life. So just keep taking it. It's okay. Like some people drink coffee every day. It's okay. Just keep taking it. You're fine. You know? And then over time, it was just not feeling right. Not in alignment, not in alignment. And I just feel myself slowly getting out of alignment, slowly, but surely getting out of alignment. And what happens is when you have that thought of like, I should not do this or I should do this, right? You just have a thought that's like, do this and that's going to help you feel more in alignment. If you don't do that, you're just pushing and suppressing a part of yourself. You're pushing that part of yourself down. And over time, you're going to be just like, it's, it's like a feeling of, of being weak and not able to face resistance because the reason why I wanted to take it and continue taking it is because I didn't want to go through the experience of not taking it and what that would feel like. Because what I did learn is that Kratom does have some pretty intense withdrawals, especially if you take it on a consistent basis, or should I say only if you take it on a consistent basis. You're going to feel like strong withdrawals, right? So I'll, I'll get into my withdrawal story after, but um, I just didn't like that feeling of relying on something because I believe like one, like I have a mission, a vision and a purpose on this earth. And it's my duty to do what I can to extract that out of myself so I could share it with the world. But what happens is if I lose that vision and I lose that internal guidance and that intuition and I stop tuning into that, then what I do is I start going more towards comfort. Well, I'm going to do this because it's comfortable. I'm going to do this because it's safe. But what I realized in life is like, if I'm doing things only for comfort, I'm going to start to feel sad. I'm going to start to feel down. I'm going to start to feel a little bit of depression and anxiety because me personally, I thrive and I, I know a lot of people thrive off of going through the challenges and going through hardships and saying, I want to do something and do it. So if you're not allowing yourself that benefit, then you're going to be, you know, you're just going to feel weaker over time. And I felt weaker over time. And I'm like, y'all, I'm not, this is not me. My vision is too powerful. You know, the community that we have going, I need to show up and I need to be my best. So I said, forget it, y'all. I'm going to stop taking it. So I stopped taking it um, about a month or so ago, a month. Yeah, probably a month ago. And um Boom, it was all good. You know, I was like, oh shoot, this ain't even that bad. And that's partly why I was working with my nervous system and, and healing these different parts of myself so I could focus on charging up myself and get that natural energy, that natural life, that natural vitality. And um, so once I stopped taking, I was like, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. And then a couple days in, we had a COVID exposure in the office. So I'm, I'm at home and I'm in quarantine in self-isolation and the withdrawals hit y'all like the withdrawals hit and the thing about it is the withdrawals of kratom is so much like what 
COVID symptoms are. It's like you get the flu, you get, um, you're feeling weak, um, you're having a hard time sleeping. Um, like there's like similar a uh, fever with um, symptoms, and that's the withdrawal symptoms. So, y'all, I was in I was in quarantine, and I was starting to feel the the the, the fever coming on. You know, I was starting to feel the weakness. I was starting to feel tired. And I'm like, I don't know if this is COVID or I don't know if this is the withdrawal. But I didn't have any runny nose. I didn't have any respiratory system, anything in my respiratory system. So I'm like, yo, this is most likely the withdrawal. So during the withdrawal period, I was just allowing myself the time to rest. And I was fueling and feeding myself the high vibrational foods, the teas, and and getting myself to a place where I'm like regulated, you know? So I'm like, yo, this is the, this is how it is right now. So went through that little bit of period of time withdrawal. That's something I don't wish on anybody. You know what I mean? But I'm here going through this. So y'all don't have to go through this, right? I'm here being, sharing this with y'all. So y'all don't have to go through this, right? But it was serious, potent, but here we are. This is about, it's probably about two weeks since um, got out of self-isolation and stop feeling the withdrawal symptoms. And let me tell y'all, like once you go through that, that period of change, because at the end of the day, whatever it is, we just do not like change because with change comes the unknown. So a lot of the times we just continue to do something just because we don't want to go through that period of change or that period of unknown, right? It's scary. It's tough. It can be hard. But that's where the gold is. That's where the, the gems are in life, is going through that, that change, going through that hardship, and coming through on the other side. That's when the true power comes. So how I feel now, y'all, I feel powerful. I feel clear. I feel energized. You know, and I feel just like, I feel proud. You know what I mean? And I feel like this is something that we all got to do, is we all got to look at those things in our life. Where it's like, mm, I got to stop doing that. Or I got to start doing that. Whether it's jumping in cold water, like go jump, go do it. Stop, stop hesitating. Stop hesitating and go do what you got to do. And that's how we're going to allow ourselves to be great. And that's how we're going to allow ourselves to be the greatest that we can be. And I think that's so important, y'all, because we all have a mission and a vision and a purpose on this earth. And I don't know about y'all, but I want to feel good. I want to feel that, that fulfillment and happiness. But that fulfillment and happiness does not come from being comfortable or chasing comfort. It comes from facing life and giving thanks for all the challenges and obstacles that come in your way and finding out how I can turn this into something that is for my favor. And I was just heard a saying the other day, it's self over situation. And that's where you honor and you value yourself over whatever it is that's going on. So whatever it is that's going on around you, it's all good. Don't worry about it, right? That's what it is. But what you got to focus on is yourself. You got to focus on how you're feeling. You got to focus on what I can extract from this so I can become greater, so I can become more myself, right? So once we really focus on that in any aspect of what we're doing, y'all, I believe that's the way that we become the most powerful, potent versions of ourself, right? And sometimes that's changing our diet. That's sometimes is not thinking certain thoughts or being around certain people. That sometimes is just getting out and going for a walk. Sometimes it's waking up early. You know, there's so many of these different things that we're just like, we're hesitating on. We're like, I'll do that later, right? But I'm saying do that now. Get out there and go make that happen. Go do it now. You know, so that's my reason why I stopped taking Kratom really and truly because I wanted to feel that power back self over situation. I want that power to come from self instead of coming from what I'm doing and and what I'm taking and what the situation is. I want to feel that power from within because I believe in my power. I know I'm powerful and I want to be able to feel that. I want to be able to cultivate that. I want to be able to come in and talk with y'all and share with y'all and just like feel that pure power coming through. You know what I mean? So that's it, y'all. And when it comes to Kratom, um, throughout the journey, 
I can say that it is very helpful. It's a very useful herb for y'all to use, for people to utilize. And what I would say is just be very mindful and don't take it every day. Like, like I say with all these other herbs is cycle on and cycle off the herbs. So your body doesn't become reliant on these herbs, right? But some things, when I was a personal trainer, I had a, a client who was going through so much pain that she couldn't just do regular movements or just go through her day. So she took a little bit of that and then she stopped and she was all good. You know, we used to just take it, a couple of my friends, we just take it, go work out and they take it and then they stop and they're all good. You know what I mean? So it's a herb that me personally, I feel it's useful and I feel it has its place. I'm not trying to say demonizing it and oh, this is evil because we are the ones in control. That's like saying social media is evil. Nah, we can choose to use it or not. And that's up to us, right? So that's how we got to go and move through this world. Not saying that's good or bad, but how do we utilize it? How do we interface with it? How do we react to it? That's what's most important. And that's why I feel this video is so important, right? Because here I am, you know, here I am, I'm making a choice. To, I made a choice to go through the hardships to bring out a better, uh, not a better part, bring out a, a, a more, a version that is more myself, remembering who I am, remembering my greatness, just like Heru, you know? So I give thanks, y'all. Give thanks for tuning in. That's my story time. That's a little bit of being authentic with y'all. It's a long one. I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you've used Kratom or if you've heard about it, let me know below. Let me know your experiences. Or even if there's something that you're like, I want to stop doing this. Or this has been lingering. This is something I want to start doing. Comment below. And let's put it out there. And let's start making these things happen. Let's stop running from the truth. Because that's what we're doing. We're running from the truth. When we're not following our intuition, that's what we're doing. Running from the truth. Let's face it. Face it till you make it. All right, y'all? Sending y'all love and balance. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. Chia! Hey, butterfly. Rastafero. <laughs>